सो दिस इज एक्चुअली एम सी क्यू पेपर सो कुछली सो लेटार्ट विद फस्ट क्वेश्चन नाउ So during an experiment, a student of grade ten observed that the change of iron sulfate color due to the action of heat. What was the color observed in the product there observed? So during an experiment, a student of grade ten observed the change of iron sulfate color due to the action of heat. So what was the color observed in the product there asked? So iron sulfate uh, that residue turn up into reddish brown color. So what is that? Anybody tell me, Rafi? <laughs> yes, please. So we all knows that when we are heat up, the iron sulfate will turn up into reddish brown color. Chapter number one again displacement. Uh, sorry, decomposition reaction. Same equation and again and again every paper we are asking. So the same question. The iron sulfate color. The ex observe that the change of iron sulfate color due to the action of heat. What was the color observed in the product they are asking? So what is the product we are observing? Everybody, ferric oxide. Is there anybody in meeting? So the product which is observed in the test tube. Yes, please. What will happen, guys? Nobody is there in the meeting. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Then what is happening? <laughs> so the reddish brown, the ferrous sulfate crystals will turn up into a reddish brown color. So what is the color? What is the product, everybody? Remaining two are gases: sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide. So, what is the color of this one? Red brown only. Yeah. So, that is only ferric oxide. So, what is that action? So, reddish brown. So, equation you have to learn. So, two FeSO four if you are heating. So, it will turn up into Fe two O three plus SO two plus SO three. So, that is only the answer. See again, every most of the question papers, the first question will be related to decomposition reaction only. So only three we have: ferrous sulfate, calcium carbonate, and lead nitrate. Next, <laughs> identify the type of reaction occurred in the following picture. So acid is going to react with the base. So we are going to get salt plus water. So what is the reaction, everybody? Acid is going to react with the base, and it is producing salt plus water. Neutralization reaction. So that's what it is. So next, which property of metals could be tested in the following experiment uh, setup? So in this experiment, even you have metals and non-metals chapter. We are having this uh, experiment. So what is the property we can test with the help of this experiment? Anybody? You might be remember that physical properties of metals when we are uh, studying. You might be all remember this. Uh, Things this circuit is also there in our uh, textbook also. Yeah, so with the help of this figure, we can test the what everybody. What is the properties here? Even figure it is there. That's the importance of figure here. Metals are good conductors of what? Nobody is there in the meeting. So metals are good conductors of what? Electricity to test the conductivity, we are using actually <laughs> this experimental setup. That is only the exact figures. That's why every figure has a greater importance. So every which figure when it will comes, we don't know. So we are testing what everybody with the help of this one. We are testing conductivity of the metals. So how the how much they are conductors? They are they are good conductors or poor conductors? So which is best conductor we are using? With the help of this setup, so in between A B, we'll place the insert the sample better, and we can identify either it is a good conductor or it is a bad conductor. Good conductor means bulb will glow. Bad conductor means <laughs> bulb will not glow properly. So if it is an insulator, never glows. Next, 
copper displaces which of the following metal from its salt solution everybody <laughs> copper displaces which of the following metal from its salt solution salt solution which metal it will be displaces zno4 plus cu copper is more reactive or less reactive everybody less reactive less reactive iron copper is less reactive silver nitrate silver nitrate it is more reactive or less reactive sodium also it is less reactive but copper and silver check it everybody copper and silver more reactive or less reactive copper is greater than copper is more than silver or not everybody please never yes. call me a zebra i like hydrogen call me a pretty girl so copper is more reactive than silver or not everybody yes please so copper is uh, more reactive than silver so definitely there will be a reaction so copper is more reactive than silver so displacement reaction will carried out displacement reaction will carried out so what is the option 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 c so remaining and all zinc zno4 zinc is more reactive than copper iron is more reactive than copper sodium is also more reactive than copper so no reaction will carried out only in the case of silver nitrate plus copper reaction will carried out because here copper is more reactive than silver or silver is more re less reactive than copper so what you have to remember whenever the displacement reaction the free metal the free metal must be more reactive more reactive than the metal in compound so then only the reaction will carried out otherwise no reaction will be takes in place sure. next the picture given below depicts the ph scale so it is a universal indicator so color 1 1 to 14 that is what we all knows that now so what what could be the nature of the solution of its ph if it is recorded to be 10 so 10 means what guys anybody 10 means 10 means it will come here so it is a what weak base of course or greater than 7 greater than 7 we will say it is a base so now it is a 10 so 10 means what it is a strong base or a weak base or it is a strong acid or weak acid anybody it is the yes please it is a what guys it is the weak base so why if the ph value is less ph 1 2 3 strong acid ph 4 5 6 weak acids same way 8 9 10 10 bases 11 to even 11 also you can add here 12 13 14 we are saying a strong basis am i right everybody so even that is what so now they are asking 10 10 is a what weak base or strong base everybody it is the weak base weak base so learn that everything so from where to where strong base where to where weak base you all need to know it without anything so that's all so next this is the most important one so everybody need to learn oxidation and reduction reaction so all of you write it first full equation you write see now i already introduced this method of learning but now again i am introducing first my suggestion is to you make your own answer your option is there or not in the so given a b c d you have to verify if you are trying to find the option very less questions only we can come from the options remaining most of the cases we have to check it either our answer is there or not in the options not that you have to always uh, checking from there so that is what is you have to remember if you are depending on options what they have given we are not going to make anything better so this is what is that so this is the equation you can see is redox reaction we can make it so let us first learn the concept then we will go through that 
So which of the following statement about the following reaction is correct they are saying. So what is that actually? Zinc oxide reacting with the carbon monoxide. It will form zinc plus carbon dioxide. So let me write the equation. Now you can see zinc oxide reacting with the carbon monoxide which will form zinc plus CO2. Now see zinc oxide turn up into zinc. It is addition of oxygen or removal of oxygen or addition of hydrogen or removal of hydrogen. Anybody? <laughs> what is that, guys? Removal of oxygen. Yes, please. Removal of oxygen. So, removal of oxygen, we used to call something. Uh, what we used to call? Removal of oxygen, we used to call? Reduction. Yes, please. Reduction. reduction. Removal of oxygen, we used to call it as reduction. Now, carbon monoxide turn up into carbon dioxide. What is that, everybody? Addition of oxygen or, redu or, redu or removal of oxygen? Addition of oxygen. See, there is no hydrogen. Only removal of oxygen, addition of oxygen. Addition of oxygen, what we used to say? Is, ever of you? Oxidation. Hmm. Yes, sir, now. Now they are asking, which of the following statements about the following reaction is correct? They are asking. So, Anybody? ZNO is being oxidized. CO is being reduced. CO2 is being oxidized. ZNO is being reduced. So as I told you, whatever the substance oxidized or reduced, everything will be present only in product side or reactant side. Anybody remember means you can tell. Always yeah. the substance which is react reduced or the substance which is uh, oxidize. Everything is present only on what side? Everybody. Hmm. It is present only on? Yes, please. Reactant side. So, nothing is present in the product side. So, that is very, very important. So, please remember that. All of you. So, now, hmm. here what will happen? Everybody. So, ZN, here who is, now let me write first. So, who is ZN, who is turning into ZN? So, it is reduced or oxidized. Everybody. Yes, please. ZNO is reduced or oxidized, guys. It is reduced to zinc. Same way. Carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide. So, carbon monoxide is oxidized. Oxidized to CO2. Then, who is the oxidizing agent? Oxidizing agent, who is her? Everybody. ZNO. <laughs> yes, sir, now. Then reducing agent. Who is the reducing agent? Who is the reducing agent? Carbon, Carbon monoxide. monoxide. Now you read the statements. ZNO is being oxidized. Is it being oxidized or being reduced? Being oxidized or being reduced, guys? Being reduced. reduced. So obstruction gone. Second one. Carbon monoxide is being reduced. No. Carbon monoxide is Red, getting oxidized. Then third option, CO2 is being oxidized. CO2 is a product. Product directly you can strike out products. Products never be. Only reactants only they will turn up into oxidation or reduction only for reactants. No products will be involved in anything. And last option, ZNO is being reduced. Zinc oxide is reduced to zinc. So, oxygen is removed. True or not? Everybody. Yes, please. All of you? Yes? yes, sir. So, option D is the correct one. That's all you have to make. Learn, please, everybody. If anybody having any doubt, please let me know. <laughs> Do it fast. Next. <laughs> In the balanced chemical reaction, the values of X and Y are, see that is the importance of uh, balancing chemical equation. So, but you all need to do it. So, let me see who will do first. Everybody balance it and tell me what is the coefficient of X and Y fastly. X is in, X is in reactant side, Y is in product side. Balance it and fastly tell me guys, make it fast. <laughs> I can solve this one without, without seeing anything. So you can see sulfate, yes, please. C, sir. Option, sir, option C. C. Yeah. 
I mean, audible, everybody, everybody try to involve. This is your class and you have to remember. So you can see here bariums are, here bariums are three, but here only one. So I can put here three. So next chlorines, you can verify it. Yeah. Okay. Next sulfates, sulfates leave it. Next only aluminiums we can see. So aluminiums here two are there, but here only one is there. So let me put here two and verify that it is a balanced or not. Everything you can check. See these things. This is the question you have to come from the where. Anybody can suggest how to solve this question? Anybody? Anyone? This question you cannot go with the tabular column. Do you all understand, everyone? If you go with the tabular column, you are the fool who is spending huge amount of time on getting the one mark. So this question you have to solve from the what? Everybody, please respond from the options. By, by choosing the options, you can come out with that. So you can verify it. Understanding? So anyhow, easily we can avoid the options of B and uh, D. Even you can verify that also, either matching or not. So definitely we can. First, we can verify 3 and 5, 8 and 6. Compared to this constructing tabular column, balancing and all coming, you can easily finish by choosing the options. So I have chosen even, so this is an even popular equation, we know it to be writing. That's the reason if you learn the popular equations well, directly you can write it. So check it everybody now, 3BA, 3BA over, 3 twos are 6 chlorines, 2 threes are 6 chlorines over, 2 aluminiums, 2 aluminiums over, sulfates, <laughs> sulfurs 3, yes sulfurs 3, oxygens, 4, three, four, uh, four threes are 12. 4, 3 is 12. Power. So everything is balanced. So what is the answer? 3 and 2. Power. Clear everybody? All of you? So the way you need to solve balancing equations in MCQs. In MCQs, if they are asking any coefficients, the method of solving is substituting the options. From the options, you all need to come up so that it is easy to find it. Very easily you can solve the answers. Okay, everybody? Clear, all of you. Mr. Kaushik, you have a number. Please join with only number, otherwise don't join. Next. When hydrogen, when hydrogen of an acid is partially neutralized by hydroxyl ion of a base, we will get a what? That is what they are asking. Anybody? Yes, please. When hydrogen of an acid is partially neutralized by hydroxyl ion of a base, so we will get what? Acidic salt or basic salt or uh, what is the normal salt? What salt we will get? Anyone example also you can give if you know. <laughs> when hydrogen of an acid is partially neutralized by hydroxyl ions. What is hydroxyl ions? Anybody? Yes, please. What is hydroxyl ions? Hydroxyl ions. Oh, it's yeah. So hydroxyl hydroxyl ion means OH minus ion. So now hydrogen, when hydrogen of an acid is partially neutralizes. So please remember complete neutralizations which will give you the acidic salts, a partially neutralizations which will give you a basic salts. So that is what. Hydroxide, basically hydroxyl or hydroxyl, hydroxide, OH minus. So when hydrogen of an acid is partially neutralized of an, any kind of hydroxyl ions, then we will get of a base, we will get a basic salt. So please make that and that I will give you the equations also. So now remember this one. <laughs> Clear? Write it next.
Next. So blue litmus does not uh, show a color change when a dry litmus is exposed to sulfur dioxide uh, due to. What is the reason, guys? Anybody? So this is, the I think, chapter number two. There is the importance of moisture. Which chapter right is importance of moisture? Third chapter or second chapter? Importance of moisture is present in activity. The tube also there, there will be one activity will be there. What is that? Second chapter or third chapter? That activity, where we'll use that uh, absorption, moisture second absorption? Chapter. Second chapter. Yeah. So what is the importance of presence of moisture, everybody? So whatever it is, if they want to show their acidic nature, so it is uh, it is the first chapter, correct? Only. So acid bases and salts, you can see is everyone. So the presence of uh, presence of moisture is very, very important. So there we are having uh, this activity is even very important. Yeah, this is what. So what happens to an acid or base in a water solution? So we are using here a guard tube also, which is to absorb the moisture, calcium chloride. The question is now, a blue litmus does not show a color change when a dry litmus is exposed to the sulfur dioxide. First, sulfur dioxide is a what, everybody? Sulfur dioxide is a what? Sulfur dioxide is a acidic oxide or basic oxide? Everyone, it is the acidic oxide. Yes or no? Non-metallic oxide, sulfur dioxide. Non-metallic oxides are what? Non-metallic oxides are what oxides? Acidic oxides or basic okay. oxide? Acidic okay. oxides. Now, Blue litmus does not show a color change when a dry litmus is exposed to sulfur dioxide is due to the what, everybody? Absence of H plus ions or presence of OH minus ions or sulfur dioxide is a weak acid or non-metallic oxides are basic in nature. So last, what is the answer, anybody? Yes, please. Moisture is not there. So what is ions is not present? Anybody? Absence of H plus ions. Absence of H plus ions. That is what. So if there is no H plus ions, so that is what? What will happen? No reaction will be shows. This is what is the experiment also. So only moist paper will show the reaction. So presence of H plus ions only. The dry litmus does not change any color. Only blue litmus does not show a color change when a dry litmus is exposed to the sulfur dioxide because of absence of H plus ions. Because it is acidic oxide, so it will turn blue litmus to which litmus? It will turn blue to everybody. <laughs> blue to red. So that is what presence of H plus ions is compulsory. So without moisture, it is not possible. Next, which of the following statement represents the most malleable metals? Which of the following statements represents most malleable metals? metals what is the most malleable metals everybody malleable metals are highest malleability physical property physical properties chapter number three highest malleable metals what is the metals which is having highest malleability golden highest malleability who is having gold next who is having the next one this is here it we have correct yeah. Do you do you know that gold and silver are the most malleable metals? That is what there is. Directly you can see gold and silver. So gold and as well as silver. So what is the option? Two and four. Two and four, which is the correct option? Option D. So please note it. Highest malleable means they can they can uh, make it into thin sheets. That is what you can find. Some metals can be beaten into thin sheets. This property is called malleability. So what is the highest malleable metals? Everybody, gold and silver. Ductility also same. The ability of metals to be drawn into thin wires is called ductility. So gold is the most ductile metal. So one gram of gold, you can see, you'll be surprised to know that a wire of about two kilometer length can be drawn from just one gram of gold. This is from the eighth class you are studying. Just one gram of gold, we can draw a wire of two kilometers. That much thinner, minute thickness we can produce from the gold. 
that is the highest malleable and ductility in nature. <laughs> Next. So the diagram given below shows the human excretory system. Identify the function of the part labeled as a P. So what is the P? Anybody? This is the part which is labeled. What is that? Any one of you? It is a what? At least name it. What is the name of that? Everyone. Name. Urinary bladder. What is the urinary bladder yeah. function? Ma? To store the? Store to store the what? Urinary bladder. <laughs> to store the what? Urine. Urinary bladder function water, urinary that is on. Next, what is the aim of this experiment? So observe the experiment and let me know what you are saying. So what is the aim of this given experiment? No carbon dioxide is present. So this is what is the test tube. You all can, you, you can see that. And here we are putting a potassium hydroxide. Potassium hydroxide, this experiment also recently also I told you. Even chemistry we can interlink this one. So anybody can tell? What is the aim of this experiment? Anyone? Yes, please. What is the aim of this experiment? Ra? To prove that what is required? Shall we stop the class? What is the required for? What is the use of this experiment? Biology experiment only it is. I am not asking anything new. To prove that carbon dioxide is necessary for what? Such a people, right? People. Carbon dioxide is necessary for what? Photosynthesis. To prove that experiment only, we are having this setup. You can see this. this is what is the setup. So we are having here potassium hydroxide in a jar. So what is the importance of it? KOH. So which will prove that we need to prove that carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis. So that is only the experiment. So you are, we all know that equation also. So the carbon dioxide which is present already inside, which will be react with the KOH, potassium hydroxide. So which will form a K2CO3, potassium carbonate plus water. So that no further carbon dioxide is existed inside. So no photosynthesis is uh, carried out. So that is only that equation. So what is the proof? To prove that carbon dioxide is essential for photosynthesis. Next. Those who are not having interest, you can leave from the meeting. No issues. Which type of nutrition is carried out by amoeba and paramecium? What is the mode of nutrition, guys? In amoeba and paramecium? Everybody? Again, chapter number one. Mode of nutrition in paramecium and amoeba. Absorptive sapro saprozoic, pinocytosis and halozoic. What is the mode of nutrition? Anyone? Paramecium, paramecium, halozoic, paramecium, check your notebooks also. So what mode of nutrition you have written? Halozoic nutrition. Halozoic nutrition. So we are having three things, sapro, saprotropic nutrition, parasitic nutrition and halozoic nutrition. Saprophytic nutrition, where is that? Dead and decaying matter. Parasitic nutrition, inside the host. Halogenic nutrition means we will get the food like a complex food into by process of in ingestion, ingesting food into digested and then absorbed into the body cells. So now paramecium and amoeba, they are not living on the dead matter. They are not living inside the host. They are surviving their own. So they are surviving their own. What is the example which says halogenic nutrition means? Yes or no? Like a humans, they are also surviving. You can see the examples of allergic nutrition. I have taught you. A man, cat, dog, cattle, deer, tiger, lion, giraffe, frog, fish, amoeba. This all are halogenic mode of nutrition. That is the beginning of the chapter of life process. So halogenic nutrition is the mode of nutrition in amoeba and as well as paramecium. So, halogenic nutrition means, what do you mean by halogenic? Feeding, feeding on solid food. So, we will take the complex food and which may be like a product of plant or maybe a product of animal 
and will break them like into their body. That's what solid food into their body by the process of ingestion. So we will take and then we will break it complex food into simpler and then it will be absorbed by our body parts. So that's why amoeba and paramecium is an example of what everyone? Halozoic. If you don't know, please learn that. Next, identify the XYZ. So XYZ you have to identify. Make it fast and tell me. Again, same thing. Like process, that flow chart is very, very important. So what is the products, everybody? Carbohydrate. X is the process. Pyruvic acid is coming. And Y and Z is taking place. So it is uh, CO2 plus H2O plus energy is coming. CO2 plus C2H5OH plus energy is coming. C2H5OH is a what? Everybody? <laughs> C2H5OH is a what? Ethanol. Ethanol. Yes. I mean, audible. Ethanol. Voice is low. You can speak loudly also. Is it my voice is audible? Yes. So the live process, <laughs> again, the same thing. Every time this question, that's what I say, there will be always a question from this. So now, glucose is turned up into pyruvate. So pyruvate, it is a what process? Everybody. Yes, please. There is a name of the process even that I have taught you also. Anybody? Check your classwork so you can find that. Breaking a 6 carbon, 6 carbon uh, compound into 3 carbon compound. There is a name of that compound also. Anybody? It will be takes place in cytoplasm. Name. Name of that one. Check it everybody. Aerobic or anaerobic respiration both. Places of aerobic and anaerobic respiration, I have, I have taught you that. Anybody of you? It is? Glycolysis. Glycolysis. Then, pyruvic acid breaking into Y, CO2 plus H2O plus energy. CO2 plus CO2 plus H2O plus energy. It is presence of oxygen, which will take place in mitochondria. Next one, ethanol, C2H5OH. C2H5OH plus carbon dioxide plus energy. Sure. So it is a what? Everybody. It is a what, guys? Aerobic or anaerobic respiration? Z is, this Z is a what? Anaerobic respiration. And Y is a what? Aerobic respiration. Complete oxygen. So that's what we can say. So what will happen in the, in the options of oxygen? In the options of oxygen, yeast or we can say the process name, call it as fermentation. So you might be remember, they will produce ethanol plus carbon dioxide plus energy. So that is what it is. Then why it is a absence of like, uh, we can say presence of oxygen so that it will produce carbon dioxide plus water plus energy. And even this from pyruvate to formation of this, there is a name for this cycle. Anybody can tell me? Which will take place inside the mitochondria. Mitochondria, there is a name for this. Any one of you? Creatine. Mitochondria. What is the name of that one? All of you. It is only Krebs cycle. So please remember, don't know means nothing. Long back at the beginning of the academic year is studied. If you are not remembering, you are only going to lose. And here we are getting the energy also. How many joules? How many ATPs? Energies? Yes, please. 38 ATPs, we will get it. And in this case, we will get only how many ATPs, Amma? 2 ATPs. Okay? So do it. In the same process, will take place in the humans. That is what muscle cramps and all during running. So by that time, what is the products will come? Lactic acid plus energy. So here also we will get two ATPs only. So this is also two ATPs. And here we are going to get 38 ATPs. Please make it. This is leg muscle cramps and all during physical exercise or whatever the animals are chasing and all. Next. So what is the answer for this one now? Glycolysis, aerobic and anaerobic respiration. So option C. Next, what happens when P contracts and flattens? P contracts and flattens. So what is that? During inhaling and exhaling. So we all know that when we inhale and when we exhale. So what is the name of the P? First, at least, can you tell me? 
yesterday only somebody asked me i think so inhale and exhale what will happen so when it is becoming flat contract contract and it will become contract means it will move upwards and flattens means it will become normal comes downwards so now tell me what will happen everybody any one of you <laughs> breathing in or breathing out what is the phenomenon that takes place Yes, please. It is pushed up. You can see here. So it is going to contract. So it is lifted up. So what will happen? Air will out or air will in. If the diaphragm moves downwards, that is breathe in. Now the diaphragm moves upwards. It is a what? Breathe out or breathe in? Everybody? Breathe out or breathe in? So what? So breathe in, you might be remember. So we are having a mechanism. Breathe in and as well as uh, 